We're going to test a promise here, and we're not going to use const because I want to show you the same promise tested multiple ways. So we're going to do a let maybe. Promises are a little bit more straightforward to test in callbacks because they follow the pure function mentality of always returning a value. In the case of I.O., reading text files or calling web services, they may take a while. You can't guarantee they'll actually work. But what you can guarantee is that it did work or not. So you return something called a maybe, in this case a promise. So before each test, we're going to go ahead and create that maybe for us. And our maybe in this case is just a function that turn a promise that worked. Use the resolve if the promise worked or the dot then is supposed to fire, not the dot catch, right? Not an error. And yo, so we'll emulate that we read from a text file and it worked and we got the yo text as the data back. If you're used to pure functions, you always have to test that it sends you something. So we'll say, should be an object or object like. So we use the whole low dash concept of if we invoke maybe, then is object, the result should be true. It should give us something back. So we'll run our test, we get an object back, fantastic. Since we hard-coded the resolve or hard-coded the success, then the promise should work. Which means that the then fires. So we'll say maybe. And given the fact that we're waiting for the then, this is now an asynchronous test. Calling a function and getting a promise back is not asynchronous. You're simply getting the object or the promise back. Whether it's succeeded, whether it's pending, doesn't matter. If you're waiting for the promise to resolve to either work or fail, you're gonna have to wait. And if you don't know anything about the stack of promises, go watch my other videos. There's tons of things on YouTube about promises and the call stack in JavaScript. The good news about Mocha is that if you're gonna do asynchronous tests, you just simply put done in there. And we can say result dot then. The first parameter is a callback with some data in it. If it worked or if it failed, it's gonna call catch with an error in it. Then takes one parameter, which is a callback function. Catch takes one parameter, which is a callback function. If the promise worked, it's gonna call then and call this function right here and pass whatever data it had. If it failed, it's gonna call the catch function and call the actual callback function you gave it and pass the error that it got. Either this one or this one, black and white. It's not necessarily black and white though because it could time out. Good news, Mocha is already set to two seconds by default. Worked, we're gonna say done, pass done with no parameters to signal to Mocha, hey bro, we're good, we're, we're, everything's good here. If it failed, we're gonna pass error to done, say hey Mocha, uh, we got something bad and I'm gonna give it to you. So that way you can log it out for all my friends. And actually result is not a function, it's just a promise that's already invoked. So we run the test and you can see it works. So we get this promise back, it's dot then fires and we call it done. Catch never fires, I'm good. However, passing this is a bit verbose because we know if we pass a callback, it's gonna pass the error and we can just pass the done function because it's a function, catch will call it with the error. So a lot, same functionality, a lot less code to write. In this case, we don't want it to call with anything, so we'll do that. You could do it on one line if you wanted to. That's fine too. So nice and small. And some people like to put these up here, that's up to you. Some people like to put these up here, that's up to you. I like it like this, so I know this is the promise. It either worked or it didn't. Now the one last thing we have to test is, did the promise actually give us data that we were expecting? So we're gonna say it should, should work and return data. Now although it says and, we're only testing one thing per test. In this case, we're testing the fact that it gave us yo. So let's go back to our verbose syntax real quick. And we'll test that data should equal yo. Then we will call done. If this fails, Mocha will catch our error and blow up the test and say mark it as failure. So about the same as this, it's just we're doing an assertion on the actual data. This will test if it actually fires. This will kind of test if it fires too, but this is making an additional assertion on this. Add our done, rerun our test. And we see that it works, fantastic. Now the done callback's okay, but it's a bit verbose with promises. And Mocha knows how to deal with promises. So there's a second way you can test promises in Mocha, and that is returning the promise. Instead of doing this done callback, so we'll start up here, we can return the promise itself. We will return result. We can still write our promise functionality down here, but Mocha already knows that if it's a catch, it'll already do this for us. So we can actually remove this. And the second thing is it knows that if it's a dot then, then it considers it successful. So unless you're actually validating data, Mocha considers a, a resolved promise successful. So we can actually remove this too. The fact that we have this variable and then are merely returning it is kind of pointless. 
So we can simply just return the maybe. The fact that you're actually returning promises on a single line with one line of code means that we're violating what an error function does for free. So we can just return the maybe. And now you have it on one line. Another way to test promises as well. Correcting the data is a bit different. We don't need to do the catch. And we actually don't need to do the done. And we don't need the return value of result because we're already getting it from the maybe and just returning that and then doing dot then on it. Now, if you never use promises, this might be confusing, but the promise in here is going to run our code first, run the assertion, then resolve itself. That then resolve itself is now Mocha's turn to say, all right, it worked. Let's get rid of the done because Mocha wants either nothing to be synchronous, done to be a callback, or return a promise. Those are the three ways that Mocha unit tests work. And Jasmine is very similar. Now, if we run our test, it'll work, but we can show you that if we throw here, that it'll fail, fail not just the promise, but also the test. So it, it knows the error boom. That is how you test a successful promise in two different ways using Mocha and taking advantage of Mocha's syntax for knowing what promises are and returning them, dealing with the dot then and catch internally, and using error functions to make it nice and terse.